An Air Force fighter jet shot a Chinese spy balloon Saturday near Myrtle Beach. Officials say that it took a cross-country journey, passing over military bases. Congressional leaders will get in-depth briefings on the balloon this week. Mark Kansian is a senior advisor at the Center for Strategic and International Studies. Colonel, it is good to have you here with us this morning. Thanks for having me on the show. The balloon flew right over the Charlotte area over the weekend. Uh, what do you make of this, and, and what's the talk about uh, the, the aftermath of, of the U.S. shooting it down? Well, you have to keep in mind that this is... Uh, received a lot of attention, but it's mostly about symbolism in the sense that there are many countries with spy satellites that, uh, including China, that spy on the United States every day. You know, what's different about the balloon is that it was very intrusive. It was very in your face. It was a pointed reminder that the Chinese have sophisticated military capabilities uh, and that the United States is in a long-term competition with uh, China. I think there's a lot of questions as we look at the path. I mean, it spent many days over the United States, and the first we heard about it was earlier in the week over Montana. And I think a lot of people are just going, we had the capabilities. Why didn't we shoot it down? Yes, there was the risk of debris falling, but in Montana, where it's more rural, people spread out. Why didn't we shoot this thing down earlier? Well, the Biden administration is worried that, you know, what goes up must come down. And if it comes down in the wrong spot, of course, you know, people might get injured. You know, that would be even more dangerous. You know, so they waited until it was over the over the coast. You know, next time they might make a different judgment. But I respect the, the, the fact that, you know, they're concerned about, um, you know, effects on uh, people on the ground. How are Chinese leaders reacting to the use of force to bring the balloon down? Well, the Chinese have complained, but they, they recognize that this was over U.S. airspace and that, you know, by law, the United States can uh, take action against it. So they complain. They've, they've apologized, um, but they haven't said that they're not going to do it again. And I think we can expect that there'll be more of these incidents. There have been many of them uh, over time. They've uh, been over the United States, over other countries. This apparently is one of the Chinese um, sort of central uh, reconnaissance programs. What does this do to our relationship now with China? Does this help or hurt? We know Secretary of State Tony Blinken was supposed to be meeting with uh, Beijing leaders. That's now been postponed. What does this do to, to the tension between us? Well, it's evidence that there's a continuing military competition and uh, a political competition with uh, the Chinese, that this is you know, continuing at a very high level. And uh, you know, the balloon incident is just one uh, piece of evidence. It's probably going to continue at particularly as the Chinese become more assertive both around the world and in the Western Pacific, including Taiwan. What does that relationship look like in the, the coming years, the next two to, two to five years, even 10 years? Well, certainly we, we hope that the relationship will stabilize and that the two countries will uh, find ways to continue a competition without that competition either becoming uh, kinetic, without be, uh, sliding into some sort of uh, conflict. The United States was able to do that with the Soviet Union over the Cold War, working out procedures for uh, forces uh, coming together, uh, recognizing that although there was a competition, we didn't want that uh, to escalate. I think we're going to see more of that with the Chinese over time. The Chinese show no interest in uh, backing down from their military buildup or their aggressive diplomacy. So I think this competition is going to continue. Uh, Colonel, while we always want peace between China, Taiwan, us, all of our allies out there, you know, there's always the, the talk, the possibility of what if, what if there were war? If, if, if China were to strike first, what would we do? And I know part of what you do at the Center for Strategic International Studies, along with your son, is sort of creating this war game strategies of, of, of what if. How does that research, uh, how does that play out when you look at war gaming between China and us and our allies? Well, that's right. There were there were three of us who developed a war game. It was set in the year 2026 to look at what would happen with a, a U.S.-China conflict over Taiwan. We ran the war game 24 times with a wide variety of participants, former military officers, senior civilians, and think tankers. And what we found was that the United States and its allies were able to sustain a uh, autonomous and democratic Taiwan, but it came at a very high cost. Uh, the U.S. and its coalition lost dozens of ships, hundreds of aircraft, and thousands of personnel. The Taiwanese economy was wrecked, and the Chinese also suffered heavily. So our bottom line was that we needed to 
increase deterrence, strengthen our uh, position in the Far East so that this war would never happen, or if it did happen, we could bring it to a close more quickly. A very important hmm. work uh, that you do there. Uh, Colonel, thank you so much for being here with us. A, a timely topic in light of all the events over the weekend. We appreciate your time. Thanks for having me on the show.